for a moment, envision a world that is not dependent upon humanitarian aid. Now, bear with me now, but if AI was built to scale across the humanitarian sector, we could potentially, bear with me, decolonize, but ultimately end the need of aid dependence upon the global north. Now, I know this sounds quite grandiose. As someone like me, I've spent years, well, especially coming from someone like me who spent too many years on the front lines, you know, from, I don't know, crises and outbreaks to Ebola and Deepwater Horizon and Syrian civil war, there's a good chance every time you turned on the news in the last 20 years and saw a disaster and devastation, and I was already there. Or on the 57th leg of a journey, flying coach, yet again. But the stakes have never been higher. What if I told you we are facing 35 global disasters, three-fold increase from pre-pandemic levels? We're not doing well, guys. 339 million people will be in need of aid tonight. That is roughly the population of the United States, possibly going hungry. Now, there's an imbalance in what we as a society and the tech industry view as worthy of AI, advanced technology, and frankly, our attention. When it comes to Instagramming our dinners tonight, I'm guilty of it too, the latest dance on TikTok, or having that Amazon package deliver our essential hair care products. We'll get to healthcare products for sure. It's our leaders in our respective industries are more than willing to back up these efforts, and I understand why. But recognizing incredible energy and talent that goes into these advancements, not focusing on humanitarian aid solutions is a missed opportunity. We have a duty and the compassion to revolutionize humanitarian aid. Hence, I feel that it's imperative that we support integrated, scalable AI solutions across the humanitarian and development world to actually close out crises and wars rather than starting new ones. So how do we do this? Well, for example, AI can be leveraged particularly in last mile situations. When it comes to humanitarian access, right, remember these two terms, populations where AI can be leveraged, particularly in last mile populations, where access is limited either due to financial limitations and sanctions, violent threats, or rugged terrains. And I humbly experienced this and navigated firsthand in 2018 for roughly 4 million IDPs, internally displaced populations, that were trapped in northern Syria. It was there where I utilized advanced mapping solutions. By utilizing tools such as AI, machine learning algorithms, coupled with aerial footage uh, like analysis systems on the sub-national level, we can identify previously inaccessible areas. But what if I told you this is just the Flintstone version of what we could do tomorrow? Yeah, Flintstones, I'm old, I'm dated. Trust me, I look younger than I am. But by using this tech in tandem with readily available drones to deliver aid, similar to Amazon packages, we can achieve a breathtaking result. The dual benefit of strengthening localization while also closing the gender equity gap. So my mixed Persian heritage has reminded me of late of the power of women and what we can do in a society through determination when we decide to fight against inefficient structures for everyone in our society. Hence, one of the most powerful means of achieving scalable AI solutions is actually supporting and empowering the women who are already doing that great work on the ground. They are the women in tech, they come from the brown and black diaspora, and they're the local communities that are directly affected, and they know the contextualized data that's needed for these algorithms. They are the humans behind the algorithms. Before I let you go, I just want to remind you that there are change makers, these are not the change makers, but we all kind of hope that we are, across our society from Microsoft leading AI humanitarian action efforts, and there always will be skeptics of whether or not this actually will work. But the thing is, is when we get ahead of it and actually connect and develop the strategies and regulatory bodies that we need, these advancements do more benefit than harm. And if we don't do that, it will do more harm than benefit. So before I let you go, I just do want you to imagine what Florence Nightingale could have done in the 1918 influenza pandemic or WHO in terms of Darfur. This is not a silver bullet, but getting to my geeky slide back hair, I do kind of feel like Wonder Woman or Iron Man telling Jarvis or Friday to get ready, right? Because we have some work to do, right? And yes, I'm a geek. So how can we put our tech where our values are? Even here at home in the US, these advancements can provide solutions to lack of drinkable water in Flint and Mississippi, 
I look at crises in terms of farming, so looking at open AI innovations in my home state of Wisconsin, or climate disaster issues happening across the nation, such as Florida or California. You know, my time on the front lines has provided me unique insight into which policies and approaches work. I've worked firsthand with millions of children worldwide. In Syria, half of those four million, two million were children. And that simply can't be a reality. If AI is truly supported, funded, built to scale, it will provide us this long overdue opportunity to revolutionize, and I know it sounds cliche, decolonize, but ultimately transform the humanitarian aid world and this entire field to succeed where many have struggled before. 339 million people. Let's get to it. Thank you.